Hi folks, David Creative Craft House to show you something that we think is pretty special. Uh, we took on the hexadecimal uh, puzzle as a project, um, both as a technical challenge, by far the most technically demanding puzzle we've ever tried to make, and out of respect for this uh, puzzle which I think is uh, one of the most difficult ever created, uh, and, and certainly one of the most intricate. Um, it was designed in uh, 1986 and by William Keister, a, uh, quite a quite a brilliant person, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. We'll tell you a little bit more about it, uh, shortly. Uh, but what we've done here is uh, you can see the puzzle inside the presentation box that we made, and the box has a sliding cover, and we've laser engraved some information on the top, and this will come off. Um, the puzzle will, uh, of course, come out, and uh, here we have it. Um, this is made uh, as a, almost an exact duplicate of the uh, original puzzle. Um, it's also made from cherry. Here's, here is an original um, uh, that you, so you can see the same size, the same operating mechanism, and uh, we think the same, same quality. Um, um, it's wood, this particular wood is from Paul Beaton's farm in, uh, in Maine. It's all Maine. Uh, cherry, uh, some of it very nicely figured. Uh, this puzzle um, uses uh, binary concepts. Uh, you folks familiar with binary concepts, which is how computers work, switches on or off, um, is the basis for this puzzle. And, and to, to um, give you an idea, uh, William Teaster, uh, who uh, died at the age of 90 in, in, in 1997, uh, was an electrical engineer from Auburn University and went to work in Bell Labs. Another reason I got interested in the puzzle because I was a young engineer for Bell Labs a long time ago. Um, and he uh, began work on uh, developing switching and signaling systems for, for the phone lines uh, and became uh, quite renowned at it. Um, the story of the puzzle is one day he raided the Bell Labs stockroom and gathering up um, push buttons, electronic relays, light bulbs, and he was trying to build an ele electronic version of the Chinese ring puzzle, a very famous. Uh, binary type puzzle. Uh, after some time he realized he had wired it up wrong, but, but studying what he had done he realized he would stumbled on a whole new series of binary code sequence puzzles, uh, of which the Chinese ring puzzle was just one variation. He went on to sketch a whole series of logic puzzles and show how they could be solved mathematically with Boolean algebra, which is a precursor of today's computer languages. Alright, so uh, in this puzzle you see a number of different components, which I'll explain to you. Uh, these are called the, uh, this is the carriage assembly, and these are called the switching bars, and you'll see they go either up or down uh, individually. Um, this is called the, uh, the blocking, these are the blocking keys, and there are four of them, and they can be set in any one of 16 different combinations by removing this little locking pin here, and then putting them either into the one or the zero position. So with the four keys, the four um, blocking keys, there are uh, 16 possible uh, ways that one, you know, one zero could be uh, set up. Um, the most difficult, the easiest being when they're all set at one, and the most difficult being one 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 zero, uh, requiring 170 moves. And what I what I mean by requiring 170 moves is 170 moves to uh, remove the carriage. The, the carriage is this thing, as I mentioned, and it goes in, I'm looking upside down here, so it's hard for me to tell. It goes in um, like so, and uh, will slide in when the, when the uh, switching keys are, are sloped, as you see them here. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, see, they'll go, they'll go this far and stop. Um, the object of the puzzle is going to be to remove this carriage uh, once it's inside the puzzle. Um, we have to set it up first, and the original instructions were somewhat confusing in this regard, and, and we've, uh, I think, fixed that with the instructions we provide, but I also want to show you here how to set up the puzzle so that you can, can go about trying to solve it. Uh, because you need to get the switching keys in the downward position while the carriage is over here. So what we'll do is we'll do the reverse of the easiest puzzle to get them in and you'll notice I've got it all the switching, uh, the, the blocking keys all set it to one. Um, I'm working upside down here, so please bear with me. Um, the uh, carriage, bring it in about halfway until the, the first, this key here, which is actually called the eighth key, 
um, is lined up with the center position and push in on the carriage assembly. You see this whole thing slide back. It's going to allow you to switch that one up. Come back with your um, assembly here, push in again, put that one up. And repeat that. You're going to repeat that eight times. Each time I'm performing this little switching operation here. Okay. Now I've got my puzzle in the, in the in the locked position, and you'll find that it won't come off now. There's a little piece of wood over here that is preventing the puzzle from sliding off. All right. Uh, to get it to slide off, I'm going to have to move these uh, switching blocks in the downward position as, we, as it was when we initially slid it in, and then they will slide off. But I'm going to make that much more complicated if I change the orientation of the blocking keys here. Uh, instead of 1111, if I turn to the most difficult, which is the 1110, and then uh, re reset them. Um, uh, now I've got all kinds of problems, and just I just can't start doing this because um, things I can't, I can't push in anymore. Um, it becomes uh, quite complex and, and in this series, 170 moves, there's a very, very interesting video of a, a fellow who's uh, mastered this puzzle, uh, which is on YouTube. Uh, you can find it by just going to YouTube and doing a search on hexadecimal puzzle and you'll see it uh, right up near the top. And, and I also uh, paste a link on the video here, which you can pause and copy and paste if, if, if you'd like to. Um, very interesting. And you will see an expert uh, working the puzzle, and he does it from the most difficult position all the way off. And he's really fast, and he's really good. <laughs> so take a look at that. A, a, a little bit about the the... the the, the, the original puzzle was made in 1986. Uh, they were uh, by Binary Arts. Um, the current company is called uh, Think Fun, and uh, they did give us uh, permission under licensing to make a small number of these. Um, we're, go we, uh, we're going to target 190. It probably will be a little less because we'll, we'll end up scrapping some wood, I'm sure. Um, and each one will be uh, serialized of ours. But in 1986, they made uh, 7,500, of which about 750 are estimated uh, to still exist uh, firmly uh, in the hands of uh, puzzle enthusiasts and collectors. They rarely uh, become available, uh, sometimes at auction, which is where I got mine, and usually the cost is extremely high. Um, so um, one of the reasons we wanted to reintroduce this thing is that I've had some requests from people who really want one, but uh, just cannot acquire it. Um, um, the, the, the one of the distinguishing things and uh, features of ours is on the back we have indeed the laser engraved. It's the hexadecimal puzzle 2013, and um, the serial number you'll see. This is number five of one one ninety. Uh, we will sell them in serial number order, uh, starting with number six. First five are set aside. Um, uh, the, the driving force technically behind this was uh, my my associate, I call him the, uh, the toy maker, he's a brilliant wood craftsman, Bob Nolette. Uh, the building of this thing was really beyond my abilities, but between the two of us we were able to, to, able to figure it out with uh, him certainly taking the lead. Um, the original patent number's on here and produced by permission of uh, the original uh, patent holder, now called Think Fun. Um, so this is something that um, we hope you enjoy. It does come with a pretty good set of instructions on how to set the puzzle up. I, I, I include the original instructions, the original hints, uh, along with some, some clarifications, which I think might, might help a little bit. There is no detailed instruction of step one, do this, step two, do this, and, and so forth, um, through the 170 moves to solve the most difficult puzzle. You're kind of on your own for that, uh, but some nice little hints are given. This is a difficult puzzle, um, and, and, and it's not something we recommend for youngsters. Although at the simple level, it does provide some nice introductory concepts, uh, I think. Uh, but uh, logical thinkers um, uh, is something that they, they might really enjoy. And people like uh, Chinese rings or the Tower of Hanoi, that that um, the sequential uh, binary type puzzle. Uh, this might be something that they'd really uh, enjoy. The original price for this, by the way, in 1986, was uh, 49.99. Uh, my goal was to, um, you know, obviously we can't do that today in 2013, but uh, especially with such a few number uh, being made. 
um, the, the development time in this was very high uh, for us. Um, but uh, we've kept it, I think, at uh, a price that is uh, uh, attractive for, for this, and uh, we hope it's something that um, you, you can enjoy. All right. Thanks again. This is David, Creative Craft House.